On page 118 of the Wilson Buffel book, there's a, an interesting thing. It's called Learn by Drawing. And it wants you to draw these pictures and to draw each little step and actually show a hand doing the drawing. Uh, I've done this several times. These are called free body diagrams. And it says this, Learn by Drawing, Drawing a Free Body Diagram. The idea behind a free body diagram is you take a picture and you draw using vectors all of the forces in question. You add mathematical values to them and, uh, and then you resolve a problem. And you can get to relatively complex looking problems and you can resolve them uh, relatively easily by using these free body diagrams to isolate all the different forces and equations in question. So uh, rather than do this all over again, uh, I'm going to do uh, a question uh, and it's example 4.6. So I'm going to build example 4.6 and in doing so I'm going to use this free body diagram which it asks you to do and obviously you should be drawing it as well. And uh, I'm going to grab me my whiteboard because it's going to let me use different colored pens and be a little bit more graphic about what I'm doing here. I try to keep everything centered but I'll describe what I'm doing so that you can uh, follow along and all you got to do is look down at your paper and kind of do what I'm doing. Two masses are connected by a light string run over a pulley of negligible friction as, as illustrated in the picture. So I've got a pyramid, a little triangle thing, a little bit of a pulley. We actually have this kind of equipment. and. Uh, the problem with the equipment is it actually has uh, friction, and so you, you set it up as though it was frictionless, and it makes the math easier to use, uh, but when they put real friction there, it, uh, it screws things up. So the labs come out a little funny. Uh, one mass, M1, is on a frictionless 20 degree incline plane. This is 20 degrees, there's no friction force there, and it's 5 kilograms. So M1, is equal to 5 kilograms. Okay. Now, uh, and the other, M2 is 1.5, is freely suspended. Okay. This is M2, and that's, what does it say, 1.5 kilograms? 1.5 kilograms. What is the acceleration of the masses? Hmm. Okay, looking for acceleration. Well, we've got to deal with different situations. Well, let's deal with the two different parts. We'll deal with this as a free body diagram, and then we'll deal with that as a free body diagram. Okay. We'll start off over here. Downwards, I've got M2 times the acceleration due to gravity which for the sake of this discussion here I'm going to use as 10 meters per second squared and as far as you guys are concerned it's a 9.8 because you've got calculators so I've got 1.5 kilograms coming downwards or I've got a force downwards, a weight because I can find the weight of this object the weight is mg 1.5 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity and my weight is going to be right around 15 newtons a hair less than 15 newtons when you plug it into your calculator but uh, 15 newtons so I'm pulling 15 newtons down now I'm going to have some tension pulling back up and that tension is going to come from uh, whatever this thing is so I'm still looking for a net force to the system all right, well, let's look at the second part of the problem. And the second part of the problem includes a box. The box is pulling straight down. This is mg, which is going to be 5 kilograms times the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, or a little bit less than a weight of 50 newtons. But not all of the weight is pulling down on the system. Only this part of the weight is pulling down. In his per previous discussion, this is mg sine theta. 
So that's 50 newtons, a little bit less than 50 newtons, times the sine of the ramp angle. And when I get out my calculator, uh, I discovered that this force is about 17 newtons. And I've uh, taken some liberties by rounding some numbers, but, but uh, I'm trying to fit it all in and we'll do it. And you guys are going to do it yourself anyway. So let's look at the situation. I go back up to my picture. I've got 15 newtons pulling down, but I've got 17 newtons pulling this way. And through the tension in my rope, that means I've got 17 newtons pulling up. Well, 15 down, 17 up leaves me a net force upwards of 2 newtons. So in fact, in my picture, this is going to have a net force downwards of 2 newtons. Now the question is, what's the acceleration of the system? Well, the sum of the forces is 2 newtons. The sum of the masses is 5 kilograms plus 1.5 kilograms. So it's 6.5 kilograms. So my acceleration of the system is going to be equal to the sum of the forces divided by the mass of the system. So it's going to be 2 newtons, 2 kilogram, uh, kilogram meters per second squared, divided by 6.5 kilograms. And I'm going to get a final of about 0 0.30 meters per second squared. All right, let's go see what the sample problem had to say. And it goes through all of the steps that I just went through. If I've got the mass of one, the mass of the other. It tells me to visualize this by drawing my free body diagram, labeling my forces, the tension, the normal force, even though I don't need the normal force. The normal force will come in a briefly when we get to friction. And then actually, it starts taking me through this, this calculation, refining the tension in a string that's accelerating, which is really kind of a complicated situation. We might not even get this far in our class, but look at this. It's going to go through the x component, to the direction, the y component, the normal force. Um, there's no acceleration in the y direction, so there's no net force in this direction, so the normal is component. The sine theta, which is producing uh, the pulling tension on it. This is uh, the um, y component and that's balanced out and so there we go just the sine component and uh, the ma total mass times the acceleration of the system and when we're all said and done if you look we got 0.3 something which is what I'm kinda looking for. Work this whole problem out in your book. If you don't understand it go work it out again. Draw the picture two or three times. That's how you do them.